So hello and welcome. This is going to be an unboxing and a review video because um, I bought uh, myself a very low cost but I think still quite very usable um, introductory microscope and uh, what I want to do now is, is I want to unbox it and I want to give a quick review because uh, I hope uh, that uh, this way with these low cost microscopes uh, that there are going to be also people and students uh, in the future who might pick up my cross could be as a hobby. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, uh, this uh, box here is uh, basically uh, the box in which the microscope comes in and uh, on one picture, there's a picture here with uh, different labels, some of the parts are mislabeled, <laughs> that's one funny thing. Um, and uh, the other funny thing that I found on this box is, is this, there's a warning here that you're not allowed to point the mirror against the sun. But the thing is, is there is no mirror here uh, in this microscope, it's an LED uh, powered mic uh, microscope um, and there is also a warning warning in the uh, in the user manual that uh, children should not use the device uh, because of sharp edges now i did not find any sharp edges and of course this microscope was uh, designed to be used by children but not only children i think uh, also um, uh, adult beginners uh, might find this microscope quite usable okay so uh, let's unbox it yeah okay so this is uh, the box okay um so let's uh, open it up and let's uh, see what's in it and the first thing that you see is is uh, the user manual. That's uh, that's nice. Uh, the user manual in here. Um, you can see that it is uh, written in different languages. Now I have to say right away that uh, it's not written in very um, good English or German or I do not know so much about the other languages. But it is a fairly complete user manual. Um, but there are a few. Well, there are a whole bunch of, of uh, typing mistakes. Um, okay, uh, in here. And uh, and so on. So um, it seems to be a little bit. I don't know. Some parts seem to be a little bit copy pasted. I have to admit, uh, because they do not really fully apply to this uh, microscope. Um, there's also a warning somewhere that children should not use the device. Okay, uh, and avoid contact by children. It says here. Okay, I mean it's kind of interesting. But it's really funny. It says here that it's an inverted microscope. It's not an inverted microscope. It's an upright microscope. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, I would say you gotta take uh, this user manual a little bit with uh, with a grain uh, with a grain of salt. Um, but otherwise there is uh, the basic information is there at least uh, I get the feeling that uh, they at least attempted to put together a reasonably meaningful user manual but um, they didn't always succeed I have to admit okay um, there's even some uh, short description here on how to make a temporary specimen but I think uh, this is a little bit too short uh, so uh, yeah Okay, in any case, uh, let's uh, take out the box. Um, I have already previously removed the tape. It was actually sealed close here. Okay, so let's take it out. And now let's, uh, let's open it and let's see uh, what's inside. Okay, so um, here we go. I think I'm going to turn the microscope around to give you a better view. Um, it is uh, inside a styrofoam box, uh, some silica gel. There is also some uh, foam padding here that, uh, yeah, kind of uh, keeps uh, everything nicely in place and uh, what we have here is the following here these um, are some um, prepared slides I'll have a look at this this uh, later um, there are two eyepieces this is a um, I think a 25 times magnifying 25 X uh, eyepiece then a 10 X um, 10 times magnifying eyepiece um, a mobile phone um, adapter um, so this is actually quite an interesting concept of uh, not seen this concept before so I'll see how well this actually works um, and then of course uh, the microscope itself uh, so let's uh, unpack it so based on what criteria did I now choose uh, this microscope uh, over other low-cost uh, entry-level microscopes? Well, um, there were essentially the following. Um, first of all, um, I could buy it over Amazon. Um, so accessibility and uh, easy availability was one of the important criteria. But uh, about the microscope itself, um, there are not that many extremely low-cost microscopes that have two focus knobs like a coarse and, and a fine focus. But this does have one. So uh, this is uh, was actually 
actually a primary um, criterion as well. Um, and uh, another thing is, is it does uh, have a mostly a metal construction and also it does have relatively large uh, objectives. Um, so this uh, was actually um, were the criteria that kind of helped me distinguish um, um, this microscope uh, from other microscopes that are actually more into the toy toy uh, Toy, toy microscopes, okay? So, okay, so let's uh, take it out. So here it is. Okay, so that is, let me move this a little bit more into the center. Okay, this is how it looks like. Um, seems to be made pretty much of, of all relevant parts are made of metal. Um, and uh, the base down here, the plastic base down here is plastic. Um, yeah, but that's not a big thing. Even my good uh, Olympus microscopes uh, have uh, a plastic base here. And down here for the battery. Uh, so three uh, AA batteries uh, fit in here. There is no uh, connector for an external um, power supply. Um, yeah, so and it has uh, two focusing knobs, of course. Um, and a fine focusing uh, focusing knob here. Okay, so um, the objectives um, I do not know how good they are. Uh, they look relatively large. I do not know if they actually adhere to the 160 millimeter standard. So uh, maybe it's possible to unscrew them and then take one of them out. And then let's uh, see if uh, I'm able to fit in another um, microscope uh, objective. Let's see. So I have here a 100, so that is basically here, this here is a, a 160 millimeter standard objective and uh, I think I can already see uh, that they do not fit. So these are not standard objectives, okay? Not, so it's not for me possible to insert another one. Not a big deal, not a big problem, um, as long as uh, they work fine, yeah, it should be fine. Oh, look at this! Huh, it's spring-loaded, okay? That is a, that's an interesting one, a spring-loaded objective. Um, this is a protection system, uh, so uh, if you, uh, in case you crash uh, the objective into the slide um, so that the objective and the slide are not damaged. Okay, that's interesting, okay? For such a low-cost microscope like this one here, a spring-loaded objective, that's quite something. Okay, so let's uh, put it in again. Okay, so no, um, at least uh, the objectives themselves are not um, basically DIN. Um, objectives, but the eyepieces might be. So let me see if uh, this eyepiece here actually um, s adheres uh, to the 160 millimeter standard. It does look like it. Okay, so let's look again here. So let's uh, remove the cap here, this one here. Fine. So now I'm going to take one of my Olympus uh, eyepieces, the, the good ones. Okay. Let's see if I can exchange this, and uh, it does work, okay? So that is actually a, a good sign because this uh, would mean that uh, I can also connect um, a, a USB microscope camera here. Um, yeah, so this is actually very, um, yeah, very, very, very nice, okay? So uh, it, does, it does shake a little bit. I don't know if it's the table. Uh, it might be the table. No, it's not shaking anymore, okay? Yeah, so um, let's uh, go ahead, let's remove this uh, paper here. Okay. And, and let's, uh, let's have a look how, um, how well it actually works. So um, here I've got the four times magnifying objective in place. This is the coarse focus knob. Okay. Yeah, this is the fine focus knob. When you turn the fine focus uh, knob, then of course uh, yeah, the coarse focus also turns. A little bit because uh, they're of the gearing system, and uh, I'm going to put another high power objective here, and let's see if I'm, if it crashes. Ah, yeah, you got to be careful. Okay, so there is no built-in um, protection to prevent uh, the um, objective from crashing into the slide. It's all good to know. Okay, so okay, so that is uh, basically um, the way it looks like on the bottom here. What I have, what we have here is we have a, a disc with different filters. I <laughs> now, the, now I dropped the eyepiece. <laughs> Never forget uh, to remove the eyepiece. Um, yeah, so this, uh, yeah, this uh, ring down here is actually, mm, I don't really get the point of it because you're just some plastic uh, filters here, uh, which kind of just change the color of the appearance. It's not a real condenser, obviously, okay, but uh, yeah, I, I don't really see the purpose of this. I, I guess it just uh, is there to keep uh, the children a little bit busy uh, changing the colors around. Okay. Um, over here is uh, the LED illumination. 
Okay, I do not know how bright that is. Um, light intensity regulator is here. That's good. And uh, you have two lamps. You have one down here, um, and the other one is uh, from the top. And I guess uh, with this switch, you can switch uh, and you can select. Um, I don't know. Is it does it? It does appear to be. I don't know. Is this plastic? It does appear to be metal. Okay, but I don't know. The handle here is does have a very plastic-like feeling to it. Okay, and it's also a little bit flexible. But this down here does seem to be metal. Can it be that they somehow combined plastic and metal together? I don't know. I don't really know. Okay, uh, but in any case, it does make a very sturdy um, and a very solid impression. This is very good in that sense because uh, then you can actually, uh, yeah use this uh, also in the, the educational sector okay especially um, when uh, children use the microscope um, yeah the, the handling can be quite rough um, all, the stage however is in it seem, does seem to be a, a, a aluminum metal that is uh, very good because otherwise uh, um, when you put a slide on it, it otherwise would scratch very easily um, I will also use this uh, adapter here those suction cups here are there to hold uh, are, hold, are there to hold the uh, the mobile phone in place. I have to tighten it uh, so that it uh, fits snugly um, around uh, around the eyepiece. Okay. But what I'm thinking of is, is actually what I could do is, is I could simply get myself another eyepiece, uh, put it in here, and then simply exchange it. Okay, as it's needed. Okay, so what are the contents uh, of the box now? Of course, the microscope itself. Uh, there is a uh, ten times magnifying eyepiece. A 25 times uh, magnifying eyepiece, um, a mobile phone adapter, which is pretty good, really. Um, I, I'm actually quite surprised. Uh, I'm going to show you how this works. And there is also a, a box uh, with uh, ready-made slides and, and also some blank slides and uh, blank uh, and cover glasses. So, yeah. Um, and uh, I quickly had a look at these slides, and they're professionally made. Okay, so they're um, actually yeah microtomed, except the house fly legs, which is basically a hole mount. Um, yeah, they're stained and microtomed and uh, they're I think uh, they're quite good okay so um, next thing is the following uh, we're now going to have a more detailed look at the different uh, parts uh, of, uh, of this microscope and then I'm gonna tell you um, what I like about it and some parts uh, or some um, aspects that I do not like so much about it the microscope has a coarse and a fine focus knob so you can see that the stage uh, it can be raised and lowered quickly by turning uh, the coarse focus knob and uh, by turning the fine focus knob the stage uh, goes up and down only only slightly so for um, making more precise adjustments to the focus. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I actually chose uh, this uh, microscope here is, is because it does have two uh, focus knobs. And it is like this that uh, many um, other microscopes uh, actually only have one focus knob um, but uh, I wanted to have uh, one with uh, two because this is also then something that you can find in more expensive microscopes and for me this was actually one of the, uh, the, the criteria for having selected this particular uh, microscope advantage of a battery powered microscope is, is that you're independent of any power supply so especially if you're in a school um, and you want to use it in a classroom um, it increases portability that's bottom illumination and here top illumination as well um, there is however one thing that I need to say is, is if you when you turn it on um, I do not know if you can now see it uh, see it uh, quite well or not um, but it is uh, not not very linear the response is not very linear so this means uh, that uh, yeah uh, the, the LED the LED uh, kind of jumps a little bit in, in, in brightness now the reason why this is the case uh, is is because uh, LEDs generally have a non-linear re response uh, so if you actually want to have a continuous response and you have to add some electronics uh, to the microscope which which I think is not necessary and simply would make it more expensive. But there is one thing that I kind of like about this and look, um, you can actually take uh, this uh, top part off um, and uh, you can directly access the LED. Now why do I like this? I like this uh, because um, you can now exchange it, okay? Um, LEDs don't uh, break easily anyway but should they break you can get yourself a new one and simply uh, drop it in here. But in any case this is one of the things I liked. Uh, I don't know, let's see if I can pull it out. Yeah, see you can pull it out, okay? Okay, that is basically how it looks like. Yeah. And uh, 
Yeah, uh, you have to basically simply take care that you put it in uh, with the correct polarity again. Okay, let's put it back in again. Here we go. Now I did also see something quite interesting here and you have to tilt the microscope. Uh, there, the hole in the stage, there is actually a lens in here. There is uh, actually a very simple condenser in here. Um, I like this uh, because uh, this actually makes uh, sure that uh, the specimen, the light is, is, is actually bundled together on the specimen. Yeah, so they actually added a, a little uh, optical element here as well. Okay, now let's uh, open up the base and let's have a look inside because sometimes the inside reveals a little bit uh, something about the quality of the device and uh, it looks quite neat and orderly. Um, all of the relevant cables are actually put together uh, over connectors. Um, yeah, um, it does seem to be um, yeah, quite, uh, quite okay. In that sense, I'm a little bit relieved. The company seems to be quality conscious. They could have simply also soldered, soldered everything together in a wild way. So, uh, now let's uh, disconnect uh, the tube um, of the microscope. I need to have separate tools for this and all these tools were not provided. And simp I'm simply unscrewing them and now let's have a look uh, how it looks uh, in, in there. And uh, what we see is, is, is we see that there is a small mirror uh, in there which redirects the light. Normally there should be a prism in there. I'm not saying should be but uh, for cost reasons they have simply used a mirror. This is basically um, yeah, something that you do normally do not see on, on higher end microscopes. Um, the dovetail is made of plastic, uh, that is uh, one thing, um, but uh, the rest here, um, is, everything is metal and uh, it fits uh, in there so snugly and firmly. Yeah, um, I'm also now disconnecting the tube. Uh, this one is also made of metal, so yeah, um, as you can see the threading here. Um, so it is also quite uh, quite solidly built and these are the two eyepieces. There is a 25 times um, eyepiece um, and uh, there is also a 10 times eyepiece. The 25 times eyepiece is made fully of metal. It's uh, relatively heavy. Um, however, the 10 times eyepiece um, is, uh, has uh, the front part, the outer part co covering is plastic while the, while the barrel itself is, is metal. This is now the mobile phone adapter. And you can see that by screwing and turning uh, the, the ring, it is possible to clamp in the eyepiece. And this is quite solid, actually. It, it, it is a very good grip um, on, on the eyepiece, um, which um, yeah, is, is quite, uh, quite important. Now, this is now um, the so-called uh, the adjustment of the eye relief, which is the distance between the mobile phone um, and uh, the, the eyepiece. And this distance is very critical. And this is actually the thing that gave me a little bit of a problem because the distance is too large. And I'm going to show you right now, I'm now trying to connect my mobile phone here and you can see a small ring of light, a small disc of light, okay? So it does not fill the full screen. I have to zoom in, uh, yeah, uh, manually. Of course, unfortunately, there I cannot move the picture. Yeah, um, so that is uh, the the thing. Um, and uh, however, it, it fell off because my uh, mobile phone cover is not smooth. So what you have to do is you have to use the rubber bands uh, to fix this. So I'm using now my second mobile phone. This one does have a smooth cover, and uh, this one actually does uh, did stay uh, quite uh, quite well. But again, here we have the problem that there is only a relatively small area um, that you can actually see because um, there is no. It's not possible to move the mobile. Phone one for closer to the eyepiece. Yeah, so that is actually the largest uh, view, field of view that you can get. Um, uh, even when I removed the plastic cover um, of the mobile phone, um, I did not get this full view, so I had to zoom in again. Okay, so I now I removed the plastic cover um, of the mobile phone and you can see that it's still not, uh, not close enough. Okay, so the distance is, is simply too large still. Okay, this is a pity. Um, that's uh, unfortunately a pity. Um, and uh, what I have uh, done next uh, is uh, the following. I have now exchanged uh, the eyepiece with uh, another eyepiece that I had, a slightly better eyepiece. And this is basically how it should be. I get a much, much larger uh, field of view. I can still zoom in. The image quality is significantly larger. Yeah, um, and with a 25 times um, eyepiece, I'm also not getting a full field of view. Uh, they generally have a smaller eye relief anyway. You know, so um, unfortunately, yeah, it, it doesn't work. And the, the bottom part here actually, yeah, 
is, is uh, has to be a little bit off because it actually bumps into the handle of the microscope but this is not a problem really okay so what you have to do is, is you've got to hold it by hand if you want to get a full field of view you have to basically hold it by hand um, and uh, here is the comparison let's start comparing the quality now on the left uh, the cheap low-cost microscope on the right my expensive olympus microscope uh, a huge uh, price difference um, but you can see that the image quality is is not so much different really um, yeah, so at least with a four times magnifying objective, it's it's uh, yeah, quite similar. You can see that the field of view of my Olympus microscopes is also much larger because the eyepieces are, are better. Yeah, so this one is at the next higher magnification using the 10 times objective. Um, you can still see that uh, the low cost microscope still provides a reasonable, um, a reasonable uh, picture. Um, the contrast is not quite as good as uh, my more expensive Olympus microscope, but I mean, you can do some microscopy work. And as you can probably also have noticed, it's a mirror image, right? Because um, of the mirror in the microscope and the prisms in my Olympus. And let's go up to yet a higher magnification. This is actually where we start to see the first real differences. Um, the uh, low-cost microscope has and now is really losing a little bit of contrast and um, also uh, resolution. But otherwise, it is still usable at, um, um, at, uh, with the 40 times objective. And therefore, I'm confident uh, that uh, people who have this low-cost microscope yeah, are able to see all of the relevant things that you normally also would be able to see with a more expensive microscope, at least up to this magnification and resolution. So what is my uh, summary of this uh, microscope now? Um, yeah, first of all, uh, I'm going to tell you what I liked. I liked the fact that the build quality is quite good. So there, is, uh, there are no uh, major complaints about that. Uh, the body is made of metal. Um, all relevant parts are made of metal. The image quality, while of course cannot compare to uh, the uh, to larger microscope like the one I have here, of course it cannot compare um, that, uh, but it is definitely good enough uh, so that you can actually do some decent microscopy. So for children um, or amateurs that do not have very high expectations or people who think about starting the hobby um, but who basically are not sure whether they actually will be interested on in the long run or even maybe for homeschooling something that has not been talked about so much um, um, uh, as a homeschooling microscope where you do not want to spend uh, too much money um, either um, I think it's quite uh, quite uh, quite suitable okay so um, overall I get the impression that whoever designed this microscope um, had an honest um, attempt of creating a, a quality device that um, is usable okay um, maybe not top obviously not uh, but uh, very usable what do you expect for around 80 dollars or 75 euros or something okay I mean for that price you get a lot of microscope for relatively little money that is the good thing so now about the things where I was a little bit disappointed and uh, we're not only a little bit disappointed but very disappointed um, we already showed you this uh, um, uh, mobile phone adapter and I really think that this mobile phone adapter is a good idea I mean the, I like the concept um, uh, it allows you to adjust the uh, the, the, eye, uh, the distance of the uh, mobile phone to the to the eyepiece um, yeah, I've seen mobile phone adapters before uh, that did not work as well as this one okay so that is first of all the good thing here however uh, it does not work well with a supplied eyepiece this is this is the problem the the eye relief of this eyepiece is is way too small this is a problem generally of, of low cost uh, eyepieces and this means is i cannot use the full potential um, of this um, adapter uh, because i cannot move close enough the the, uh, the plastic is too solid it's too thick uh, and their distance between the the front lens of the camera and the eyepiece is still a few millimeters too large um, and so this means the whole purpose of of of, of a good adapter is a little bit defeated because I cannot I don't have the benefit of it okay so what I still see is I still see a small circle um, but if I'm able to hold the mobile phone by hand as I showed you then I'm actually get, getting a much larger um, I'm, I'm get, getting the full field of view but I have to do this by hand I cannot get the full field of view with this adapter because the eyepiece and the adapter well they're not matched okay so now I did um, it is easily possible, um, as I've already showed you, here it is, um, to exchange um, an eyepiece uh, with a slightly better one. That's um, easily possible because uh, the, um, it's compatible, okay, the, yeah, it's uh, compatible, that is, that's good, okay. But those eyepieces also cost a little bit of money, okay, so they're also not cheap and uh, that is the, the problem um, a little bit. Um, yeah. 
yeah so that's a little bit uh, disappointing however um, one of the things that you can do is, is it is possible instead of an eyepiece uh, to connect a, a microscope camera um, and uh, then you can actually do some microscopy um, on on the computer as well so in summary um, not in summary yet last point uh, something that I do not quite uh, yeah it's not a big problem but that I think is is uh, simply has to be mentioned two more things as a matter of fact the objectives are not par focal this means means uh, when I have it in focus using the four times magnifying objective I cannot directly switch over to the 40 times uh, because um, I will end up crashing into the stage I have to refocus over the 10 times objective that is one issue that I'm, I noticed um, also an issue of low cost uh, um, objectives not a big problem I would say um, and the other thing that is a little bit of a curiosity I have to admit is, is that uh, in, in here in, in the tube there is a, a mirror which you have already seen before normally there is a prism in there and because there is a mirror what I get is I get an, a mirror image um, and I do not get an upside down image like you have normally um, but I get a, a mirror image um, if I would not have told you you probably most people would have not noticed okay um, so that's simply other um, another thing that has to be mentioned so this might be an issue if you are actually looking at uh, printed letters with students or children uh, they will appear uh, mirrored um, in a, a larger microscope which is conventionally designed with prisms it will appear upside down uh, but uh, it will not be a mirror okay so this was basically it uh, so um, I generally think uh, yeah an interesting uh, interesting device um, and what I will be doing in the future is, is, is I will actually be giving instructional videos um, um, on how to uh, look at cells and how to do other things and I will be using this microscope because as a matter of fact uh, low-cost microscopes like these are probably more commonly used than very expensive uh, large microscopes here and uh, after all I do want to get people interested in microscopy so I do not want to scare them off um, with uh, my he large huge expensive microscopes this is also one of the reasons why I bought this because all the many other videos I'll be using this microscope. So this is uh, everything that I want to say right now. It's a long video, I know. Um, I wish you all the best and as always, happy micro hunting.